On 15th March 1979, the temperature was between 20 degrees centigrade below the freezing point. However, the oil was kept warm inside the tanker. The captain was growing weary of climate. His sole aim was to cross the thick binding fog zones as fast as he could. In 1983, in US, a section of 4-inch gas pipe developed a major crack and ignited a house below which it ran with a huge fire. Hi, I am Hilal Alam from Al Zebra. Today, we will discuss about a tale of two design catastrophes. Point Cooper, Nova Scotia, Quebec. The oil tanker MV Kurdistan began its voyage from Point Cooper. It was freezing cold morning. Temperature was minus 20 degrees centigrade. The oil was kept warm inside the tanker. However, the captain was growing weary of climate. His sole aim was to cross the thick blinding fog zones as fast as he could. The sun rose to the zenith but still invisible to the captain. Unable to proceed with the violent winds in ice infested waters, the ship was turned around towards the open sea. Around at 1.15 in the afternoon, he heard a sudden thud and a shudder from the number 3 wing tank. There formed vertical cracks from which the oil started escaping into the sea. The ship was redirected towards Point Cooper where it started from. There was another shudder around 6.40 in the evening. By 9.30 in the evening, the bow rose and the ship was broken into two halves by giant waves. The outside freezing temperature caused the outer wall to contract while the warm oil kept the inner wall expanded. Thus, the thermal stress caused the varied material expansion on the side. We can't blame the climate as the ship was built to construction type Ice Class 1. However, the thermal stress was partially responsible. Then what was the real reason behind it? There is a part called bilge keel at the lower bottom of the ships. The absence of the bilge keel would capsize the ships easily by the rogue waves. The keels protect the ships from rolling. The small projection is usually riveted or welded to the body of the vessel. A thorough investigation revealed that a crack found in the bilge keel caused by the inadequate welding penetration during the previous service. Due to this, the ship lost the stability and broke into two. Fortunately, there's no loss of lives. These types of failures are due to negligence or poor workmanship. This has nothing to do with design. In forensic engineering, these are called type 1 failures. The raging flame had almost reduced the abode to ashes. A section of 4 inch gas pipe developed a major crack and ignited a house below which it ran with a huge fire. Fortunately, there's no loss of lives. The initial investigation could not convincingly find out the cause of the leakage. In fact, the use of polyethylene pipes was a new design approach for the ease of maintenance. In case of steel pipes, the valves were to be closed at either side of the maintenance site. After the fire, the experts browsed through the past service reports and figured out nothing significant from them. It had been pinch clamped six years earlier in the region where the leakage developed. Bingo! It struck them something. They immediately simulated the pinch clamping on the PE pipe in the lab and found a thumbnail sized fracture in the inner wall of the tube. 
Further fracture tests indicated that the crack was growing further over a long period of time and burst under a heavy pressure. After this costly lesson, the new procedure was introduced with the higher grade BE materials. Even now, the practice of pinch clamping is in place but with an additional sleeve around the newly serviced spot to relieve the local stress. This catastrophe was not caused by poor service or poor materials. The failure was as a result of new design approach or new materials. This type of failures are named as type 2 failure in forensic engineering. Now the question is, out of these two catastrophes, which one is more dangerous from the design point of view? The answer is type 2, which is more dangerous than type 1. Because type 1 failures can be prevented with the implementation of a strict guidelines whereas type 2 failures are unpredictable or unavoidable. In fact, it's unknown. The Hyatt Regency walkway collapse discussed in the previous video comes under the type 1 failure but caused by the designers themselves. The link of the Hyatt Regency walkway incident has been given below. The tale of two design catastrophes tell us that whenever one goes for design modification or material changes, she needs to take a fresh look at the design from the different perspective to prevent possible failures. Thank you very much.